This week on the doctor's office, we're talking vaccines, the facts. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. Ben. I'm a practicing emergency physician in the Midwest United States. And on this episode of the doctor's office, we're talking everything about the facts for the new COVID-19 vaccines. The first obvious question is how do vaccines work? And on their most simple end, it's exposing you to pieces of a virus or a bacteria without you actually getting sick from that virus or bacteria. Now, when you're talking about the COVID-19 virus and then the vaccine for it, it helps to understand the anatomy or the structure of the COVID virus. COVID-19 is one of the coronaviruses. So it's a, it's a family of viruses that are called corona because that's Latin for crown. And it's called that because of these spike proteins that are on the shell of the virus. So we've all seen that classic image. I'm going to put it up right there. It is of the, the sphere, which is made of fat for the virus, and then these spikes on them, which are the spike proteins, which help move it through the body and help it attack cells. So what happens uh, universally in developing these COVID-19 viruses is we want to try to expose you to those pieces of the COVID virus without actually exposing you to the full virus itself. And right now we do that through isolating the spike proteins, those little red colored um, spikes which you see on the images. And by exposing you to those proteins, your body can learn what those proteins look like or be able to identify them and then quickly attack and destroy whatever is attached to it in the future, i.e. the COVID-19 um, virus itself. All of this hinges on your body's immune system. So it activates your own body's immune system, which is the beauty of these vaccines. It works primarily on two different cell types, the B cells, B as in boy. Um, those are cells that produce antibodies. If you ever heard of antibody testing, it's the same type of thing. So these cells produce antibodies, which are little proteins that go through the body, recognize specific viruses or bacteria, or fungus infections, um, attach to uh, those uh, invaders and then help your body recognize and destroy them. And then the other cell type is the T cells. Um, we all learned that in biology, they're the killer T cells. And they're the ones who actually go out and destroy the virus itself. Now granted, it's a lot more complicated than that in terms of if you wanted to understand the breadth of how this all works. I'm not an immunologist, but I'm a plain old emergency doctor. So I'm gonna tell it to you in the way that I understand it, which I think is a simpler approach. So now that we know a little bit about how vaccines work, how does the new COVID-19 vaccine work? And here it depends on what vaccine you're talking about. Right now, there's two different types of vaccines. The traditional vaccines, and the example of that right now, or, or the largest one, is the AstraZeneca vaccine. And then the, the two new, uh, more novel or modern vaccines, which are based on mRNA technology. And in the US and the UK right now, that's the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines. The traditional vaccine, or the AstraZeneca vaccine, works in the way I just described. So there are isolating spike proteins of the coronavirus, injecting it into your arm or your, or your buttocks or wherever, and your body then sees those spike proteins, the B cells and the T cells learn what they look like and then can destroy whatever's attached to it in the future. Now what's really exciting is the new vaccines, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine. These are what's called mRNA vaccines. mRNA, um, you can think of as messenger RNA. That's what the M stands for. And RNA, you can think of similar to DNA. Animal genomes are made up of DNA rather than RNA. RNA, you can think of as half of a DNA. So DNA is that double helix. You, you've seen it. I'll put a picture of it right there. Um, it's a it's an intertwining of these two long, 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 long chains of um, molecules, which are the genetic code for human beings. RNA, um, you can think of as a, a cut down the middle. So rather than two strands coming together, it's only one strand. And because it's only one strand, it's rather fragile. Human beings have RNA in our own bodies. It's a normal part of our cell function, but also bacteria have RNA. Viruses have RNA. And when you're talking about messenger RNA, it's RNA with the purpose of being a blueprint. You can think of this as a complex design which gets created in your cells 
It goes out into the body of the cell and finds a specific factory type organelle called the ribosome. And the ribosome you can think of as just a production factory. It's like a kind of a stamping tool for lack of a better way of describing it. And so this RNA gets fed into the stamping tool and it, it decodes the RNA and it tells the ribosome what to create. And that, that creation is a protein. This can be an incredibly complex process and it's, it's the beauty of um, life itself is, is how this genetic code of material works. So what we've done is we've taken part of that messenger RNA, that blueprint or that, that um, template on how to produce proteins, and we've taken that and put it inside a fat globule. The fat globule is there because otherwise the mRNA would break down very easily. Like I said, it's a very unstable thing. And from there, we inject the fat globules with the messenger RNA into the arm usually, and it diffuses into the cells in your arm. And inside the cells, these messenger RNA are released and they go to work in the factories and tell your factories to produce a certain number, a limited number of the spike protein. So what we're doing is we're giving our own body a blueprint of a spike protein. And that spike protein is the COVID-19 spike protein. It does not tell your cells how to produce COVID-19. It tells them how to produce only a specific part, which is the spike protein, which in of itself causes no damage to you. It's something that is only there as a flag in to tell your body what this is and how to destroy it. And voila, the M messenger RNA is then broken down at the end of the process, which is normal. And then the spike protein gets exposed to your immune system. Your immune system learns it, memorizes it, destroys it, and then knows how to destroy it in the future. Ah, immunity. Does the mRNA stay forever? No, your body breaks it down. This is not some sort of new thing that's always gonna be in your body now and forever our genetic code is changed and it's gonna be one of those sci-fi movies. No, you will not grow a tail. No, you will not become a lizard. I don't know what other crazy conspiracy theories there are out there. That won't happen. And so why is this new technology needed? Why is it so remarkable? Why are people in healthcare so excited about it? There's a lot of reasons and I'll go into a few of them. One is the traditional vaccines take a long time to produce and require a lot of resources. You're literally having to produce parts of these viruses on a massive scale. So the pharmacy companies are producing large, large amounts of these spike proteins, trying to segregate them into the proper amount and then putting them in vaccines and then you inject them from there. That takes a long time and a lot of resources. These new vaccines get that done in a much shorter time. Think of this in the context of a uh, virus that we know very well here on planet Earth, influenza or the common flu. Every year we produce a flu shot but that flu shot has to be in production for over a year. And we have to guess what the new next year's strains are gonna be. And that's why the influenza shot typically doesn't have the best efficacy. Random aside, still recommend you get your flu shot every year. I get my flu shot every year. Every doctor I know gets their flu shot every year. It is still worth it despite having a reduced efficacy because it still does work. But now with this new mRNA technology, we're able to produce these vaccines very quickly and we can see what the, the latest strains are gonna be and then figure out how to produce vaccinations against them. And more important to that, they are so much more effective. The Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine, we're talking 95% effective. Compare that to AstraZeneca, which is that traditional vaccine I talked about earlier, that's only 70% effective. Think about it, if you were gonna buy a lottery ticket and they told you you could buy one that gave you a 70% chance of winning the lottery and one that was a 95% chance of winning the lottery. Which one would you pick? Come on, we want that lot of money. We're gonna choose the 95% effective one. This literally could change vaccines forever. Super excited. And then the next question comes, what are the risks? What are the side effects of these vaccines? Now this is something I'm gonna do an entire different video on and that's gonna be my next video. So stay tuned for it. But in short, it depends on the vaccine in terms of how common you're gonna get these side effects and what to look out for. The vast majority of side effects are extremely mild and are much more preferred than getting the actual COVID-19 virus itself. The most common things being pain at the injection site, fatigue, headache, chills, joint pain, fever. Typically things that things like ibuprofen and acetaminophen or Tylenol can get you through no problem. Guess what? 
it's way better than having to deal with the COVID-19 virus. I just got my Moderna vaccine right here, right here. Um, and I will post a video after I get that second dose of the vaccine describing my experiences with the vaccine and my experiences with COVID. And I can already tell you my experiences with COVID are going to be much worse. Now, some concerns I commonly hear from people, and they're understandable. This is, this is something new. This is something that scares a lot of people, and you should take your health very seriously. My, my channel is built on empowering you to understand your health care and take it seriously. So number one, we kind of touch on this. Can it alter your own DNA? No. This messenger RNA, once injected, stays in the body of the cell. It never goes into the nucleus of the cell, which is where your own DNA is. And even if it did go into the nucleus of the cell, there is no cellular machinery in the human body that would allow it to integrate with your own DNA. Number two, can you get COVID-19 from this vaccination? No. The vaccines all the vaccines, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, all of them are ways to expose you to parts of the COVID-19 virus without getting the COVID-19 virus. There is a chance it will produce side effects that we just talked about, but it will not give you the virus itself. Can I get COVID-19 after being vaccinated? Yes, although the chances are so much smaller than if you were to not get vaccinated. Remember with Moderna and Pfizer, we're talking around 95% effective. 95 for Pfizer, 94.5 for Moderna. And even the AstraZeneca one, the more traditional is 70% effective. To compare that to influenza or the flu, which is only 40 to 60% effective, there is a greatly reduced chance of you getting COVID-19 after getting this vaccine. And then finally, I'm gonna end on some things that we just don't know yet about the vaccine. And these things are just gonna take time as we study the vaccine. And to be totally upfront with you, I don't have the answer to this. Experts don't have the answer to this. Number one, how long the immunity will last? No one knows. This is a new vaccine. Number two, if I'm vaccinated, is there still a chance that the virus could live in my nose and I could transmit it to other people? We don't know that yet. We're studying that right now. Number three, what are the long-term effects of this vaccine? We don't know. Everything that we have studied so far shows that this is a safe vaccine. There is nothing that makes me, having reviewed and reviewed the data, or any of the major governing bodies for physician groups, or scientists, or the Center for Disease Control, or the FDA, have any warning flags that this is going to produce some sort of long-term negative health effect. On the contrary, the real risk for long-term negative health effects is if you get the COVID-19 virus. And then finally, we just don't know a lot about the effects for children, pregnant women, and those who are immunocompromised, people who are on chemotherapy, people who have immune diseases where their immune systems just don't function well or have other diseases that affect their immune system. This is something that's still very much in research right now. I'll do another video talking about these special populations. So stay tuned for that video. I'll link it down below once I create it. All right, so that's part one of the video series I'm doing on the vaccines for the COVID-19 virus. Subscribe and, and uh, hit the bell icon below to be updated when I do the other um, video series. I have a stretch of days off coming up. I'm gonna film a bunch of episodes. And I should get it up soon. In those, I'm gonna talk about the differences between Moderna and Pfizer and really kind of tease them apart. I'm gonna talk about special populations, pregnant women, children, immunocompromised people. And I'm gonna talk a lot more about the side effects and what to watch out for when you get the vaccine. And as always, thank you so much for watching uh, my video. I hope this informs and empowers you to make good healthcare choices. This is a battle that we have to all fight together as a community to beat COVID-19. Thanks for watching.